Big storms are about to wreak havoc on the USA's weather pattern. This comes as an abundance of moisture is in place across the country for thunderstorms to fire up day by day. This video has the latest on severe weather information, including risk zones and timing, plus a look at temperature trends for the coming days. One Nation Weather Starting with the why of the pattern ahead, I'm showing you this atmospheric pattern map to overview what will create storms at the surface. Watch the blues on this playthrough and notice how they sink south and east into the weekend time frame. Those blues indicate a trough or an intensifying area of jet stream energy. It will be sinking south into an area with warmer than average temperatures. As the favorable corridor of jet stream energy sinks southeaster through this weekend, an even more favorable corridor for showers and even severe storms will exist along it and to its south. Let's jump into some timing and an overview for the likely storms ahead. This guidance that I'm about to use on screen is going to play through six hour increments of precipitation. Wherever you see more vibrant colors that indicates likely heavier storms, those storms will have the better chances of flooding in severe weather as we get those chances to ramp up in the coming days. Let's play this out starting as we go into our Friday June 6th of 2025, where the biggest boundary to watch is going to be a cold front bringing scattered to widespread afternoon and evening thunderstorm coverage. That is going to include zones in the northeast U.S. to the south of the boundary. The boundary will extend over into the lower Great Lakes, where along and south of it into parts of the Ohio and mid-Mississippi valleys as well. We could be watching a good chance for not only thunderstorms, but some that could be on the severe side. Even as we see some new low pressure starting to organize in parts of the central plains back behind the front, that zone will have enough daytime heating for some of these isolated storms to go severe from parts of the front range in Colorado, stretching all the way down into parts of North Texas and Oklahoma. So be on the lookout in all these zones for possible severe storms on Friday. Going out of Friday night into Saturday, the forecast will become a bit more complicated as the existing front in the eastern U.S. and then the new low in front moving out of the central U.S. will combine forces a bit and make for a messy situation. You can see the zones with the highest confidence in showers and storms. That's going to include at least the mid-Mississippi Valley and some parts of the Ohio and Tennessee Valleys, but really anywhere from the southern plains towards the Gulf Coast as well as the East Coast states between the two systems showers and storms, some of which may be on the stronger side with severe weather and flooding, do look possible if not likely. In addition to that coverage of storms, some new showers and storms could be on the potent side at times late Saturday into Saturday night as new low pressure exits the north central U.S. and southern Canada. That will become more of a factor as that system shifts southeast into Sunday and Monday. I can tell you from here on out, it is going to become the story of the two low pressure systems. The one that started in the plains on Friday, and then the new one I just mentioned that will move out of the north central plains out of Saturday into Sunday. Watch them both evolve as we finish the weekend. Sunday will have two main corridors of shower and thunderstorm development as a result of these two lows. Here's low number one, making its way into some parts of the Ohio Valley. We're along and ahead of it from the Mid-Atlantic back down to the Gulf Coast and in points in between. There will be a chance for showers and storms. Once again, showers and storms that get better induced by daytime heating will have the potential to be severe at times. In addition to that focused corridor of showers and storms, there will be another one with that low pivoting down into the upper Midwest, ahead of that low in some parts of the Great Lakes region, places like Illinois, Iowa, and Missouri, and all the way back down to some parts of the Southern High Plains. There could be a few severe storms even there, as we see just enough daytime heating getting pulled up behind the most recent systems for those storms to have a chance at going strong. When you get a mix of all these different systems and boundaries crashing to the south and east, especially in a time like June, it is very likely that they are going to begin stalling out and slowing down. That's likely what we're going to see by Monday into Tuesday, where a lot of the immediate southern states of the U.S. and the immediate eastern states will get a better chance of storms daily through the foreseeable future of next week as we see lingering fronts really just sitting around. With that being said, let's now focus in more specifically on the next few days of severe weather, starting with a broad overview of where convective available potential energy or what I'm just going to call storm energy will be each day. On Friday, it's going to be along and south of the cold front from the northeast U.S. to the Ohio Valley to the Midwest and then south of the low pressure system in the central plains. Because the low pressure and that front are catalysts for storms, with storm energy already in place in the environments that these systems will be in, of course we're going to get the potential for some of these storms to go severe. They will be mostly induced by daytime heating, as well as by some of those consistent jet stream winds moving in from the southwest to the northeast overhead. As we go out of Friday into Saturday, there will be a lot more storm energy, especially concentrated towards the southern plains in the southeast. So you can guess those are going to be the better chance zones for at least a level 1 to level 2 risk on the Storm Prediction Center's level 1 through 5 scale. Things get a little bit more complicated, of course, as the weekend goes on, as we're going to have multiple systems. 
around Sunday is when likely the Gulf and southeastern coasts of the U.S. are going to have the better chance for severe weather. But then there's also going to be a secondary corridor behind that where we get that new low pressure moving out of the north central plains. That could certainly at least induce some additional severe weather along its new cold front, stretching from the central plains up into the Midwest in that thin corridor wherever the storm energy goes into the mid to late afternoon. Now let's take a look at the forecasted severe weather risk outlooks for the next few days. I want to start with the outlook and then we'll even do the timing for this Friday and Friday night time frame where we have a broad level one to level two of five in place. The Storm Prediction Center has hashed that area out and it's south of where the front's going to be in the northeastern part of the risk zone and then south of where the low pressure center is going to be in the central plains part of the risk zone. Some of the major population centers in the peak of the risk zone, your level two of five, that includes Pueblo in Colorado, Dodge City, Kansas, Amarillo in Texas, pretty much all of Oklahoma, including the Oklahoma City and Tulsa region, over to Fayetteville and Little Rock in Arkansas, Springfield, Missouri, Tupelo, Mississippi, Jackson and Nashville and Tennessee, even on over towards Louisville, Bowling Green and Kentucky, and all the way back down to Alabama as well. Don't want to leave you out there in Huntsville. From there, there's a marginal risk zone that continues in a thin corridor south of the front, including Pittsburgh and State College in Pennsylvania. But keep in mind, we actually have an additional level two of five. Hartford, Connecticut, Boston, Massachusetts, Springfield, Massachusetts, you're under a level two of five threat for Friday and Friday night as well. Let's jump into a general overview of each part of the risk zone's timing as we go into our Friday and Friday night. And I want to start with the timing of these storms in the eastern part of the main slight risk zone. That is because this area is likely going to have a boundary moving in left over from storms further westbound from our early Friday morning. And as that boundary pushes east around midday Friday into Friday afternoon, I think from 12, 1, and 2 o'clock and after, we'll probably already be having severe storms going, and they'll continue through the afternoon and evening from southeast Missouri over to central Kentucky to Tennessee at the minimum. And of course, in the marginal areas surrounding the slight, at least isolated severe weather coverage may occur. Up the front into parts of the northeastern U.S., let's focus on that zone, you can see storms here and there, and a few of these may be severe with especially damaging winds as the main threat. It's going to be up in parts of western Massachusetts where it looks like a better chance for a line of storms or possibly even an MCS, a mesoscale convective system, could get together. That's going to have a better chance of producing a bigger swath of consistent 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts as it pushes east, maybe even some isolated hail as it gets closer to Boston into the 7, 8 o'clock hour or around there into our Friday evening. What about back in the southern high plains and the southern plains? It really looks like those zones are going to get the best chance for storm development beyond about 3, 4, and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And storms will only continue in supercellular nature more than likely as we get closer to sundown and even at the later evening hours. From southeast Colorado all the way down to north Texas and into parts of central Oklahoma and points in between, it looks like dangerous supercells with hail upwards of 1 to 2 inches in diameter, possibly even closer to 2 to 3 inches in diameter. Damaging winds of 60 to 70 miles per hour and even a couple of tornadoes here and there are going to be possible. This is your peak part of the risk zone in my opinion. And the Storm Prediction Center has even mentioned that they might upgrade this to a level 3 of 5 somewhere. As we could even see some nighttime storms rolling through central Oklahoma as we go overnight Friday night into Saturday morning. Certainly something to keep an eye on. Stay tuned to my channel and the community tabs for updates on that. Of course, more storm development is likely into our Saturday and Saturday night. This is likely going to be something I focus on in more detail with the timing in a Friday afternoon or evening video. Here's a look at the outlook, though, for Saturday and Saturday night. You can see a level 1 to level 2 of 5 already issued from these southern plains, but especially into the mid-south and southeastern regions. Damaging winds and hail will probably be the primary threats in the most significant storms once again. 60 to 70 miles per hour for gusts, and then 1 to 2 inch for hail. That's probably going to be your most likely threats from Oklahoma City and Dallas in the level 2 zone all the way through Little Rock, Arkansas, all of Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, and the Birmingham region, Atlanta, Georgia, all through the Carolinas as well. This is a pretty big risk zone, and it goes all the way over to Charlotte and Columbia. Be prepared in the southeastern quadrant of the U.S. for this Saturday risk zone. In addition to severe weather, flooding will also be possible. Let's take a look at the 24-hour increments of precipitation expected according to the Weather Prediction Center's guidance for the next few days. Starting as we go into our Friday into our early Saturday, you can see this is from Friday around 7 to 8 a.m. to Saturday at 7 to 8 a.m., right along and south of the front and south of the low pressure system in the plains where we get the severe storm possibilities. We could also be watching some isolated flooding. While most zones will get under an inch or so of rain, there will be those locally higher amounts that get two to three inches in a quick period. That's where flooding is gonna be most likely and the same threat will occur, especially where we get continuous storms as we go out of Saturday into Sunday. This is a zone that has been hit a lot this spring. Heading into the summer, it looks to continue to stay active in these zones as we're already seeing. So Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, please be looking out for the heavier storms to produce more isolated to scattered flooding out of Saturday into early Sunday. 
into our Sunday time frame. Flooding looks a little bit less likely unless it's with the storms closer to the Red River Valley, although at least isolated flooding may be possible in the southeast U.S. with those rounds. So that's the big storm discussion. Let's focus on the temperature discussion now as we go through the next few days. Of course, we've got lots of frontal boundaries moving around, and you can clearly make out where the front is set to be into our Friday, June 6th. That main front that I talked about that's going to be around at least for the first couple days this weekend, there it is stretching from parts of the northeast back towards the nation's midsection. Ahead of it, plenty of 80s and even further south, some 90s, ripe for thunderstorms wherever they can fire up, that's for sure. Meanwhile, back behind the front, up into the Great Lakes, the North Central Plains, a cooler day on Friday with a lot of low to mid 70s in place anywhere from the Dakotas over to Michigan and in points in between. Back into the Western Valleys, looking at 80s through a lot of the valleys in Nevada, in Utah, all the way on up into Eastern Washington. We could have some of those valleys in the low 90s, the valleys of California and a southeastern part of the state and into southwestern Arizona in particular 90s to triple digits. The same will continue in the west and in the far southern U.S. with more 90s and triple digits into our Saturday. Meanwhile though, again behind the most recent front, still a little bit cooler in this pocket of parts of the Midwest at the minimum. Into our Sunday we'll start to warm back up a little bit in the Midwest ahead of that next front that's going to dive out of the North Central Plains. That's a story more for another time. That's going to actually lead to even cooler temperatures for more folks as we see around to below seasonable levels sinking southeast next week. With that being said, all I have left to say is for you to hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell so you catch my videos and streams delivered in a no-hype approach in the future. In addition to that, of course, check out the free trial link down below for the access to Weatherbell model maps that I use. It will be for free and then you'll be on your paid subscription if you do sign up for that. And with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. God bless you all and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next update likely tomorrow.